What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi. I'm a board certified psychiatrist and if you're new to the channel, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to know this content matters and it's working for you as a viewer. With that said, I'm going to talk a little bit about a question that I get asked all the time. And people always are asking me like, what are the ratios of serotonin to norepinephrine reuptake inhibition in the SNRIs? So I'm gonna answer that question here. I'm gonna break down the most common SNRIs that we prescribe, and I'm gonna tell you how much serotonin and how much norepinephrine reuptake blockade you get from each. So let's start with Effexor or Benlafaxine. I think I got it right this time. Hopefully for you guys out there who have uh, critiqued me on my pronunciation of Benlafaxine, we'll talk about it a little bit here. But anyway, Effexor. 30 to 1. So that's what you want to remember with Effexor. So Effexor has a 30-fold higher affinity for the reuptake of serotonin compared to norepinephrine. So this is a lot more of a serotonin-based medication than it is a norepinephrine-based medication. And we kind of knew that because you can see that not only in the, um, in the clinical research, but you can kind of see that even in the dosing. The dosing has to be much higher to really get that norepinephrine effect. Moving on to duloxetine or Cymbalta. So with duloxetine, you have a tenfold higher selectivity for serotonin reuptake inhibition compared to norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. So we go from 30 to one to 10 to one, so tenfold higher selectivity for serotonin with duloxetine. And then we can talk about desvenlafaxine. So desvenlafaxine or Prestique demonstrates a tenfold higher selectivity for serotonin reuptake inhibition compared to norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. So again, duloxetine, Prestique, similar in terms of their reuptake, their ratios of serotonin reuptake blockade to norepinephrine reuptake blockade. So those could be equally used if you prefer. With Effexor, you might wanna just jump right to Prestique instead of stopping, instead of starting with Effexor. The next medication I'm going to talk about is one that's less familiar to people, and that is Milnasopran. So Milnasopran is the most balanced of the reuptake inhibitors among the SNRIs, which is interesting since nobody really uses it. I believe mostly it's used in fibromyalgia, and it's certainly not a formulary at my hospital and probably many others, but anyway. Milnasopran is the most balanced of the reuptake inhibitors, so in terms of uh, norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake blockade. So it's actually nearly equivalent reuptake blockade, so it's like a one-to-one -one ratio. So it blocks serotonin reuptake and norepinephrine reuptake at about the same amount. And according to some sources, they actually say the medication has even higher or more neuroadrenergic effects than serotonergic effects up to threefold higher. So some sources actually say that milnasopran actually has higher norepinephrine reuptake blockade than serotonin. So it's not one to one, it's three to one in favor of norepinephrine. Now, maybe the most unique of the SNRIs is levomilnasopran. So this is a derivative of milnasopran and it demonstrates a twofold greater potency for the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor compared to the serotonin reuptake inhibition. So what we see with this one is that there's actually a two to one ratio in favor of norepinephrine over serotonin reuptake. With that said, I've covered all of the SNRIs for you here that are commonly used in clinical practice. If you guys have questions or comments, please drop them below and please like and subscribe to the channel. Again, it helps me to know that this material is valuable for you. 